Today I'm going to break down the Docker file that gets created with ASP.NET Core projects so that you have a better idea of what's actually going on behind the scenes when you're using Docker with Visual Studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project just so we can have an idea of what we're working with. So I'm just going to choose the default ASP.NET Core web application project. I'll just give it a name. I'll call it Docker Demonstration. Then I'll click Create. All right, now the important part is right here. If you're going to be using Docker with Visual Studio and building your application into a container, you're going to want to make sure this checkbox here, Enable Docker Supports Enabled, and that you've selected Linux. You can, of course, create Windows containers, but the recommended way of doing it is really using the Linux containers. All right, so now that the project's created, you can see we have a pretty regular looking ASP.NET Core project right here with all the usual files. And there's one additional file, the Docker file right here. The Docker file is broken up into four distinct parts. There's also a comment right at the start here, which is super easy to miss and is actually really important when you're trying to understand how Visual Studio is actually building your Docker container when you're running locally. I'll explain that more towards the end of the video because I want to give you a bit of context first and it'll just make it a little bit easier to explain what it actually means. So each of these sections of the doc file is actually called a stage. Each stage starts with a from statement which tells it what image to use to build that stage. Each of the stages also has a name as you can see. So there we, here we have the base stage, we have the build stage, we have the publish stage and we have the final stage. The name is really there more as informative purposes to give you a better understanding of what's actually going on in the Docker file. It's completely optional. It also makes it a little bit clearer if you're reusing a stage from one stage to the next to know what image you're basing your next stage on. So let's look at each one of the stages to understand what they're actually doing. The first one, which is this one right here, the first thing it does is it pulls an image called ASP.NET with a tag 3.1 Buster Slim. That's telling us that it's going to use the ASP.NET Core image, which it's going to download from Docker Hub, and it's going to look for the image with the specified tag that's there. Obviously, the ASP.NET image contains everything you need to run ASP.NET Core applications, and the 3.1 Buster Slim tag tells you that it's running the 3.1 uh, version of .NET Core, and it also gives you a hint as to what the underlying OS it's using. The next thing it does is it switches directories into the app folder, which we'll see why in the further stages. And then after that, it exposes two ports, 80 and 443, which are the two ports that .NET Core is listening to by default. Now, the expose statement doesn't actually open any ports up on the container. All it is is a contract between the runner of the container so that they know what ports are expected to be used by the application running inside it. We'll use the base stage again a little bit further on in the Docker file. The second stage does a little bit more. The first thing it does is it downloads an image, which is the .NET SDK image. This image is actually a lot bigger than the ASP.NET Core image. It contains absolutely everything to build a .NET application. It also uses a similar tag, which indicates that it's the .NET Core 3.1 SDK, along with the OS version that it's running underneath. That's going to be known as the build stage. So with that done, we switch into the source folder and then we start copying files over. Now, the Docker file is actually located in the same folder as the csproj file. But what happens when Visual Studio tries to run your Docker file to build it, it's actually running it from one level up. So it's actually at the solution folder level, which is why the copy statement has the Docker demonstration folder in the path. Once the file's copied over, it just runs a .NET restore to restore all your NuGet packages, and then it copies all of the other files over that are included in your project, switches to that folder, and then does a .NET build in the release configuration. So this is where things are going to start to get interesting. We've now got a temporary image that's been built, which contains our compiled application on the SDK image. So the next step, what it's actually going to do is just use that output from the build and do, do a publish to only have the files that you absolutely need to run the project. And then the final step is really putting it all together. We take the clean base image from above and we copy the published output onto that base image. 
So what we end up with is the ASP.NET Core base image plus only the published version of the application. And then finally, what we do is we just tell it to run the application with the entry point command here. So the reason we do all of these different stages is ultimately to keep the image size down as much as possible. Like I was saying earlier, the ASP.NET Core image is a lot smaller. The SDK image is a lot bigger. So you build on the SDK image and then you copy that output onto your smaller ASP.NET Core image. So just before we wrap up, if you'll recall, I had mentioned the container fast mode being super important. If you were to run the, the Docker file build from Visual Studio, it won't actually execute all of this. It's only going to execute this first part right here. Visual Studio takes a little bit of a shortcut to decrease the build time. So what it does is it runs this first stage and then it builds your application like if it were a normal application and then it copies the bin folder over to your base image. That comes in really important when you are trying to change this Docker file and you don't see it running in Visual Studio. It's because it's not actually running all of this code for you. So you've got to remember that. And if you do have a case where you've modified anything past the base stage, that you have to do a Docker build yourself from the command prompt if you want to see the Docker image that you create locally, take those changes into account. We're going to look at that more in detail in the next video when I actually run the Docker build command. But until then, if you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments below. Be happy to answer them. See you next time.